everyone. Thank you so much uh, for all being here tonight. It is such a pleasure to host this event. And a big thank you to Elliot as well for being adaptable, striving for the best, and just working with these amazing digital platforms that we have to still make this event happen. So thank you very much. And I'm really excited, looking at the lineup of tonight especially, I'm so excited to hear from all the speakers talking on a really wide variety of topics. So we're all really, really in for a treat. So thank you for all the comments that are coming through on the side as well. I'd really encourage everybody throughout tonight to take a look at all the comments that people are writing so that we all get to know each other and embrace this way of connecting this evening. So um, thank you so much. Exactly, what an amazing group of people. So we are living in very interesting times as Elliot mentioned, and I feel like it couldn't come at a better time to be talking at an event around mental health in business. I'm sure we're all aware, not just in the UK, but globally, what the state is like in the economy, how many people are concerned, anxious for their, their business, their work, whatever position you're in. Really, tonight is about helping one another to feel empowered and to connect with one another on that level of humanity. And I've got to say, as much as everything that's going on at the moment is uncertain and unstable and everything's changing from day to day, Mental health is something that you can nurture and is in your control to tap into on a really conscious level on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you really look around, looking at the spirit, the true spirit of humanity actually is really empowering in itself from the Italian sing songs that we've been seeing in the news um, to help lift each other's spirits to all the kind gestures that people are giving each other throughout the countries all over the world to try and help elderly people, people who are vulnerable during this time. So when you really look for it, there is kindness around and, and it really, in, in adverse times, it really shows the spirit of humanity, I feel. So let's start with that on a, as a positive note for tonight. Um, so as Elliot mentioned, um, I've worked with Elliot for a while and uh, I've had the privilege of doing the full program at Speaker Express, um, which has been a great journey and I've met lots of really amazing people in that time. Um, so just as a little introduction as to who I am and what I do, my name is Tanya Diggory, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a writer, an author, and I run a business, an award-winning training organization called Karma. And um, we support entrepreneurs, freelancers, and business teams to nurture good mental health and well-being. So we do this predominantly through workplace training. So we're going through quite a bit of time at the moment <laughs> with trying to adapt our training to being more online. Um, and we have digital products and services to help people ultimately reduce stress um, prevent the risk of burnout and empower each other to nurture our emotional resilience and good mental health. So um, on that note, I'm going to be starting with a talk this evening on the topic of good mental health. Um, but just to start with, before we do dive in, um, just to um, let you all know that sort of halfway through this evening, we will have a little comfort break for people who do want to stretch their legs, grab a drink, you know, and just, and then come back and, and all join together for the second half. But there will also be an opportunity for those of you who are coming along and joining us this evening to have what is called a one trick pony moment. So we will offer six slots to people on this call um, to have a one minute chance to talk on whatever you'd like to share tonight, whatever you'd like to share. Um, so have a think throughout this evening, but you get one minute um, to, to share an insight, a story, a thought piece, whatever you feel you feel inspired to share with everybody this evening. So when it comes to that point, um, we'll let you know, and it will be on a first come, first serve basis. So the first six names that are written in the chat box, um, they will get an opportunity after the break to do a one minute. So that's what we're going to do then. And as Elliot mentioned before, we can still see each other for those who want to choose to put their videos on. Um, we can either give each other a wave or a little clap and just engage and, and keep the energy high online. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen so I can begin my presentation for you all. And I hope that you enjoy and you find it insightful and it helps you during this time. I've also included a few aspects that would be particularly relevant and helpful in the context of our new way of working with regards to remote working. So I hope you find this really useful. So here we go, let's share. And hopefully you can now see my screen. Is that all good? Thumbs up, Elliot? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Okay. So the topic of my talk tonight is what about good mental health? 
So recently, in a training session I was delivering on mental health awareness, at the beginning, I was just finishing preparing and the co-director of the organization came up to me, welcomed me and said who he was. And he asked um, about how he can introduce the session. He said, I want to do a little introduction for my staff. And I just wanted to check with you because one of my colleagues sent me all these stats through around, you know, one in four people in the UK struggle with mental health problems. And this is the, the, the state of um, the reality with suicide and, you know, how many people really need support. And then he looked at me really seriously and said, can I, uh, can I talk about good mental health? And he said, that's, that's also okay to talk about, isn't it? And I said, of course, you know, that's, that's also a really important part of understanding mental health. So I found that to be really profound. And this was quite recent. And, you know, there's something to be said for how much the, the world has woken up to what mental health really means in recent years. And we've come a really long way in our understanding. There's still a long way to go, but we've definitely come a long way. But there's still a lot of talk around poor mental health, mental health issues and mental health problems. Now, I'm going to explain through my talk tonight the balance of these perspectives because it is imperative that we understand poor mental health and what it means and how many people it affects. But it's also just imperative to understand what does it mean to nurture good mental health and how can we start, start talking about this in a healthy way with one, each, one, with one another and, and how can we start engaging in language that approaches a balanced perspective of how we talk about mental health in general. So what I'd like to explore with you all tonight is a focus on how do we develop our mental and emotional strength, because mental health is something that we all have, just like we all have physical health and emotional health and social and spiritual health. It's something that we all live with and it's just, it represents a state of our mental well-being. So there are many different perspectives to understand what mental health really means. So there's this quote that I love by Ariana Huffington, and, it, and I feel like never has it been perhaps more important and prevalent for this quote to be true of our current state within our working culture around the world. And she says, in the new definition of success, building and looking after our financial capital is not enough. We need to do everything we can to protect and nurture our human capital. So we're seeing around the world all different ways that, you know, the government has been responding at the moment. And ultimately, you know, we're in a position now where slowly, you know, people are coming first. We can't, as much as we'd love to keep the economy going as it was, we have to explore a new way of boosting our economy, right? And we have to be looking after people, putting people first. Um, because if we don't have healthy individuals, then we don't have businesses. You know, that it's, that's the main point here. So when we look at our mental health, we could see it as a sliding scale, just as you would look at physical and emotional health. So you have a positive state of mental health where you can feel really engaged, inspired, you know, feeling positive, feeling, um, you know, energized and, you know, things are going well. I'm sure we can all relate to what that feels like and that we felt that way at some stage in our lives before, <laughs> hopefully many stages. And in that neutral state, that's a representation of where we could feel perhaps not necessarily amazing, but not feeling bad. Kind of in that midpoint, you know, feeling pretty neutral, like maybe a few stresses going on here and there, a few niggles, things to sort out, but generally got a feeling of a good sense of control over things. And then you've got the state of poor mental health. Now, we can all fluctuate in and out of all of these states. But when you're in that state, and that word state is very important here because we all fluctuate in and out of different states all the time, from our sleepy getting up state in the morning to getting to work, to engaging with colleagues, to feeling stressed about something and then resolving it and then seeing friends and family. So there's all these different ebbs and flows. And actually research has shown that that is healthy for our well-being. It's not actually good for us to stay in a long state for a long period of time. So when we're in a state of poor mental health, we can realize that we're feeling, or perhaps we struggle to realize this, but we notice that we feel really sad, feel really down, anxious, perhaps quite even quite tearful. Like things aren't going as you'd expected. Like the weight of the world feels on your shoulders. Everything feels weighed down. Do you identify with what that feels like? So we can all relate. I'm sure we all connected on that, that level of humanity just then that 
that's a broad spectrum of human feelings and emotions. And actually, if you're in a poor state of mental health, it's perfectly normal to experience feelings of depression or feelings of anxiety, like I'm sure many of us are feeling a range of those types of, um, of emotions at the moment, given the current global climate. But it doesn't mean that you're depressed or that you have an anxiety disorder because those are signs and symptoms first and foremost before you even look at the diagnosis of a condition and it is a sliding scale so when does it get to be a problem you might be wondering so the longer that you're in a poor state of mental health and on a regular basis day after day feeling low moods feeling anxious you know feeling like you're not yourself and having negative repetitive thinking patterns it, it comes to a point where prevention is so important, trying to prevent this from escalating, either speaking to someone about it, or if you spot something in someone where they don't usually seem like their usual self, talking to them, trying to intervene. Because the longer it goes on, there's something to be said for going through a difficult time, having a week or two where you know, you're just going through a lot of difficulty, struggling. You may be processing it and speaking to other people about it, but it's just quite difficult. But then after a while, after a period of time, you feel stronger in yourself. You're able to pick yourself up, maybe adapt. You know, it's maybe still quite difficult, but you're, you feel stronger. The longer it goes on where you're in that state of depression or anxiety, there starts to become a neurological shift in the brain. Okay. So what do I mean by this? In the human brain, we have trillions of different neural connections. And these neural pathways operate for various different functionalities from our thinking habits to our behavioral patterns, etc. So if we want to um, make a change, the fact is that we strengthen certain neural pathways more than others, right? So if we wanna do something different, we're exercising new neural pathways. So if we wanna make a positive change, like a new fitness routine, for example, new year new me did anyone go down that road this year it's quite a classic time of year isn't it to you know get a new fitness regime in place but it could be any time of year but i'm sure we can all relate to that feeling you know when you want to do a new fitness routine and embed healthy habits so what happens you start to think differently don't you i'm going to get up early tomorrow i'm going to do this or i'm going to you know work out before um work i'll feel energized or i'm going to cook this dinner it'll be more nutritious you start thinking differently and in time, those habits become embedded and a bit more like a new sense of norm. The same thing is true of the opposite. When you go into a state of depression or anxiety, and the key thing here is not speaking to anyone about it, not opening up, not processing or having an outlet to express how you feel. That's, and imagine the kind of re negative repetitive thinking pattern that could, could be going on in your mind negative thoughts, I can't do this, this isn't good enough, I'm failing, um, I don't know a way out of this, whatever it is, it starts to send a very, very powerful feedback loop in the brain from consciously thinking these thoughts to unconsciously it's sinking in as truth. Now it's not something you want for yourself, obviously, it's, it's unconscious, but it starts to become habitual in your thinking habits and therefore affecting your behavioral patterns. And that's when it can start spiraling into something more serious. So that's the kind of def a brief definition of how to identify when it could become something more serious. So what we need to consider here is how can we find a calmer approach to observing the cycle of our thinking patterns so we can start to put into place healthy habits and behaviors that nurture good mental health. So from our thoughts to our body sensations, to how we feel impacts our reaction in situations and therefore our behavioral response in situations too. Some of you might be aware of the mind-body connection. If you've heard that term before, it's a term from neuroscience research that highlights that there's strong evidence to prove that the mind essentially has the power to either heal or hinder the body. Essentially what we think affects how we feel and therefore how we behave. So really start to listen and, and pay attention to those signals that your body tells you when things don't feel right and give yourself permission to slow down, pay attention to those things and try and prevent them from escalating. So a few ideas I've got here to share with you when it comes to observing the cycle of our thinking patterns through talking and writing. You may have heard this before, the power of speaking to someone, just that one step or writing things down. There is a, a neurological benefit to this too. So by giving yourself permission to take a step back, and this is part of that nurturing good mental health best practice and that I'm exploring today with you, 
exploring ideas like I notice I'm feeling this way. It's not something that defines me, but I am feeling this way. Or, have I understood this correctly? What is the wider context? Can I see this in a different way? What's actually going on? You know, uh, what choices do I have? Remembering to explore choice. Um, all of these kinds of questions we ask ourselves from a less reactive space can really help in terms of how our brain is processing that information. So you'll see here in the amygdala part of the brain, this is where the stress response lives and it's the emotional center of our brain. And it's a very powerful response because its function is to keep us safe and away from danger. So if we're in a high state of stress, ongoing for long periods of time, that starts to become stronger as well in, in terms of the brain's response. But close to the brain is an area called the hippocampus. Now this part of the brain is responsible for regulating your emotions and feelings, and it's also where your working memory is stored. So your memory recall lives here as well. So when we write down how we feel and name our emotional experience, or speak to someone and talk about how we're feeling, we don't have to find the solution there and then, but it is a really powerful step forward because what happens in the brain is it starts to turn down the dial on that amygdala firing off. It starts to enable the hippocampus to do its job and regulate your emotions. And most importantly, it brings resources back into the prefrontal cortex in the brain, which is in the frontal lobe part of the brain, the human evolved part of the brain. And that is where your decision-making, logical thinking, planning, doing is stored. So those are able to work in tandem together and enables you to strengthen your emotional resilience. So it's worth highlighting here that all our stories are completely unique. So whatever you feel is real and valid to you, number one. So, you know, we don't have to always understand each other or relate to what each other are feeling in order to empathize and connect, but understand what you feel is real to you and what people feel are real to them, okay? But we can all have the power to take control of our emotional state and move forward. So the power of kindness. I hope I'm doing okay with time here. <laughs> um, it is? Okay. So there's some really interesting research around kindness that I did want to share. So I'm just going to quickly pop it on the screen for you to read um, how it has a cardioprotective hormone um, called oxytocin, which um, lowers the blood pressure. It's good for the heart. Acts of kindness help boost your immune system. Um, when you do acts of kindness, it makes you feel happier. It leads to improved relationships. So this really needs to be nurtured in the workplace. Um, and if it's okay to just highlight this point around remote working, because all of us are in a place of remote working at the moment, um, just a few things to bear in mind to help you. Creating healthy boundaries for yourself, putting in practices like I just explained as well, um, on a day-to-day -day basis to help you nurture good mental health. Um, outline your, outline your ways, of, ways of working and your clear expectations, etc. But increase that illusion of proximity with others you work alongside or engage with in your work. Because where possible, if you can do video communication like tonight, it's essential because especially when we have periods of isolation, we need that human connection. So please do keep that in mind. And if you're managing staff, do explore unique ways to include your team in projects, send updates, remember birthdays, those human touches really make a big difference as well. Okay, I'm just gonna scoot through the next because we don't have time, but the importance of self-awareness, this quick quote, meditative breathing is your built-in medication where the electrical storms in your mind are quietened. Okay, so there's a lot to be said for that. That's a quote by Dr. Rahul Jandial. So a couple of minutes of quiet can help you gain a chance for perspective. Hopefully later I can talk about this more earlier, but our Reignite project helps to reduce burnout for entrepreneurs and business teams. So please do check out this link to join our free campaign and receive a 10 week free e-course on burnout prevention strategies. Um, and there's some blogs we have on our website that can help you in terms of the five stages of burnout, how you manage stress, how you embed a self-care plan, practice mindfulness and how to be kind. So I hope that these resources are really helpful for you and it's given you some insights into how to nurture good mental health this evening. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Okay, I'll take out the screen sharing option. Oh, one sec. Just bear with me. <laughs> I can't seem to, there we go. Okay, right. So I hope you found that useful. And now um, if, as, if anyone's got some questions, by the way, that they want to ask, um, we can allow a minute or so for that, if that's still okay, Elia. Um, if you just want to pop it in the comments um, or you can unmute, uh, we, oh, Elliot can unmute you um, if you want to ask, um, if there's anyone. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions, even if, um you haven't got them right away just put them in the box and we can always do it like a question time for it yeah. um because right now no i can't see any questions but well oh, done 
<laughs> I think, oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Can you share the last quote again in the comments? I'll share it in the comments. That's no problem. I'll do that. Is that the meditative breathing one? Could you just give me a, a, a yes? Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I'll share that in the comments. Thank you very much. I appreciate and, your kind feedback too. And also, if you want to just share your big takeaway, but we're going to move to the next speaker, but if you just want to share your big takeaway, that'd be great. Um, cool. Over to yeah. you. Great. Thank you. Um, so, yes, uh, my takeaway is that we all have the power to explore choice at any given time. Some things are in our control and some things are out of our control. You know, we can all relate to that at the moment, I'm sure. So really identifying what's in your control um, is important, but also recognizing that internally we are fully in control of that. It may not always feel that way. And sometimes it's easier said than done. But what I'm talking about here is a practice to cultivate and a healthy habit. So just getting started on these tips I've shared with you today can help you embed healthy practices moving forward where you can feel more empowered in your choices to nurture good mental health. Okay, so that's my takeaway. And um, now we are going to move on to the next.